<laughs> Undoubtedly, one of the most mysterious episodes during the course of my acquaintance with Sherlock Holmes was the curious case of the one-legged dog. For the first time I can recall, Holmes seemed baffled, and with some difficulty I persuaded him to take a few days off in the country. Travelling light with a violin and a crate of cocaine, we camped comfortably by the banks of the River Strond, a pleasant little tributary of the Spittle. <laughs> the country air, however, did very little to calm the restless mind of my eminent companion. I have never seen the greatest thinking mechanism in the history of Europe so absorbed in the icily calm process of ruthless mental analysis. Who did it? Who bloody did it? <laughs> Is there one you great, boring, fat toad of a doctor? Do something! I was used to Holmes's erratic outbursts of emotion caused in no small way by the three bottles of an excellent shattered Loire de la Touche consumed in half before lunch. Come, Doctor. I took the sensible precaution of threading my way through the dense undergrowth, whilst my intrepid companion strode noisily along the open pathway, uh, playing the mad scene from Verdi's Il Doctore Estupido. I must confess I was uh, puzzled by his behaviour. Come out of that shrubbery, Watson. Don't you see it'll afford you no protection? It's the one place that our friend the enemy will be looking. His suspicions will scarcely be aroused, however, by the sight of two ordinary wayfarers playing the mad scene from Verdi's Il Dottore Estupido. Did you hear the sound of something going? Yes, I think I did. I took it to be the persistent tapping of our little industrious English woodpecker. I think you're mistaken, Watson. The sound you heard was in fact made by a small Bavarian hammer, manufactured in the spring of 1833 by Grösselbeck sons of Munich. I realized for the eighth millionth time that I was in the presence of a genius of the first water and a violinist of the second water. Holmes, what is that sinister ticking noise I hear? Sounds to me like some form of primitive explosive device. The type manufactured in Bavaria in the spring of 1833 by Grösselweig and Sons of Munich. Powered, I should say, by a water-driven cuckoo clock. And by the increased tempo of the mechanism due to explode in approximately 30 seconds. I was much calmed by Holmes's explanation. But a further distraction was in store. Excuse me, Holmes. Hello, Dr. Watson here. Oh, I see. Well, look, give her plenty of hot water, and for goodness sake, keep pumping. 